Other biased critics who won't let go of their dying theory, like Jackson Wheat, in his attempt to falsify Tompkins, Jackson Wheat strawmans him and then goes on to explain how a gene can arise and move over a fusion site. He then points to a 2017 study, which Jackson states a gene formed over the fusion site. If you read the paper, it directly states that the new gene went through relocalization after it formed, meaning it arose and then moved over the fusion site. But this is not what Tompkins says happened. He states that the transcription is being read over the fusion site, and it's the fusion site that is inside the gene, not the gene moving over the fusion site. Not that the gene moved over the fusion site. If it was moving, it would give evidence that it was moving, and still moving, and eventually pass it. And that is not what Tompkins says. Jackson Wheat strawmans Tompkins. Tompkins' argument relies on the false premise that a gene can't form that spans a fusion site after the fusion event. His chart has an arrow, and to a layman, it looks like it shows the direction the gene is moving. But what is actually being shown is the direction of transcription, how it is read by the RNA polymerase, not the direction in which the gene is moving. It is not. The gene is inside the centromere, and these critics never mention the absence of satellite DNA. It is the coup de grace to their entire story.